No opening pick, no opening casualties on either team, and now they decide to go all in. 40 seconds to spare. Damage just being chipped away. Death by a thousand paper cuts, but no body has dropped just yet. Now Madden opens his account, breaking the deadlock and a flurry of Danish kills come into fruition. Zipex with two. Stiko's all that remains. Nice headshot at range, but no Molotov to deal with the defusal. He has to come out swinging with some block headshots, does connect onto Dupree, but at that range the USP will shine brighter. Members on Astralis does start to hurt them, they have to give up some key integral choke points, so Main and Pop Dog being pushed simultaneously, time beginning to get to 30 seconds, bit of an issue, Farley with two big entries, but there's damage inflicted from Magisk, he can't finish off the kill or deny the bomb plant, and his teammate of Zipex has gone down alongside himself from that man Zen. Showed impressive consistency, now they just need to show, okay, we can now go and win ourselves some tournaments again. Zipex, nice, quick, deagle. If three goes unchecked but can't make the most of it, and that whiff will certainly cost them the round. Well, I've said that, but D Device is still alive. That's been up there. Mr. Consistent, one of the best players for a number of years. Able to land some more shots, but Emmy will survive on about 50. And this is where the other Godsent members will start to move into position, and Farlig... They may turn some heads again. Yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of teams are almost in the bracket of, like when we spoke to Stown earlier, like, I want to play Astralis again. Because at this point, there's people doubting us because there are teams like Astralis who still are going to come back into the land period at least. Dupree somehow has managed to get himself two kills with the USP, making this one a little bit more costly than I'm sure Godsent would like. Now, for me in this matchup, if God sent... And now he has to give up the site, funneling all of Astralis to the backside of B. However, all five of them are here. Make that four. Farlik springs into life, springs into action, and snatches away device in the process. Glade trying to make moves up the side. No one's watching this from the tees, but it only costs them one life. And that could be the moment that finalizes this round, or perhaps not. Zipex and Dupree come back again for more kills. Farley goes walkies, and Dupree strikes for another time. A 3k for him, mainly off the back of utility. There's 30 seconds to go. They've got to make moves, and they've barely got any real estate. Farlig's going to start things off well. Glaive's still in position, but he's desperately low. However, he springs into action at the perfect time, and... Dupree and Magis will combine to give them a comfortable third round. And because he's not focusing so hard on micromanaging everybody else, he still allows him to perform better and have more clarity. Great flashbang. Glaive supporting him with Dupree, who goes in, gets himself the frag, Madden getting tagged down from a molly, and also the HE, but it's the AWP of Magisk who picks it up for the secondary, who goes in for more, and then silences Farlig. It's a five on two, and Astralis making that comeback a reality. There's a very rough patch of rounds after winning the pistol. They lost three or four in a row. Yeah, I'd say it's it's definitely top two difficult sides to call on. Mm. Yeah, and just to go a step further as well, like not only are you kicking things off on Inferno, but also you're allowing Nuke to be played, which for me is it's either neck and neck or maybe slightly less difficult. But it's a very hard side to make work. Both orbs, though, chime in. As two pistol frags came into effect from both Emmy and Stiko, Madden snuck around the back of Dupree and now still alive on full HP. If Magisk's not careful, he may lose his life, but he holds his ground, as do Astralis. Yeah, this is huge. You can see the impact it has. Four players now just stuck on the side of A. The flashbang, we've already seen this coming a couple of times. Last time it was Glade flashing in for Dupree, but Dupree doesn't mind being the assister. He tosses in the, the flash. Zen can walk out onto Ivy. They just got to pick there for Magisk, maybe anticipating no second player will be pushing through. But even with that oversight, it only costs them one death. And Madden, you spoke about how he can use the Mac 10. He trades up to the AWP and uses it to devastating effect on Magisk. And Glaive is watching Connector. 
23 seconds. Madden, oh, he spots the freebie onto Zipex. He misses his shot. He's about to get close line from Blade. Device is getting aggressive again. He may get the drop onto Zen, but in the post plant, Zen has no reason to peek. He can play the close angle. He can force Device into an awkward position. And even though Device is struck once, does he expect Zen to be on the close angle? Hell no. Zen comes out with his tech nine and dispatches Device two on two. They know roughly where Madden is. He's already struck once in this round. And so they've got their crosshair across to the position. But all of the pressure has now got to go across to Astralis. They have to retake the site. Zen misses out his shot with the orb, comes out into the open, sideswipes onto Zipex, and now it falls upon Dupree, who gets caught in transition as he tries to relocate across to the site. Which means that Zipex is getting flashed out, has to relocate. Damage inflicted with the M4, but Emmy comes out in ahead. Magisk who was aimed in and would have had him dead to rights, unscoped at the very second he crossed over. That's unfortunate timing, which may cost them so dearly. Glaive, though, at least watching the back of Magis, because all three of them culminate together and look to push back on the site. But look, there's two Molotovs, and the snow smoke's in play for the Danes, even if they get onto the site. And that's a big query still. They have to contend with a Molotov of Farling. They've got to put that pressure down now. Farling peeks out with the orb. He misses his shot, but now he can line up the Molly. Molly tossed in. Tech 9 switched across to make him more mobile. He can get up close and personal. Coming down towards the ramp. Has heard no smoke and no defuse on the site. Either of them have a kit. They're going to have to stick on this. They picked up the kit, so they're going to have the defuse after all. And it's going to be heartbreak for Farling. We've, uh, we've had some of the other players step up that, well, they may not have necessarily needed in the past. Here we go, though. Quick push in. Zipix, he's got a hell of a lot of assists. He's been doing damage, but hasn't been getting the frags this time, though. The flashbang leaves Emmy completely blind, and this is a shutdown. Zen will at least pick up one, and actually, Farlick's found another. However, Zen now needs to close this on his own, and it's going to be more of the same. And in a couple seconds, Godsent are going to realize it. It's delayed. They've waited a long time for this rotation, and already Astralis are getting way too close, but Emmy takes down Device, who is not anticipating that position to show itself. Madden, in the meanwhile, has to try and fend off against Ivy. Postplant comes in. Good shot from Madden onto Dupree, and that now gives them another avenue of aggression back onto the site. He can wrap around the tees. Oh. This is such an integral play from Madden. It's allowing the rest of the troops to start to culminate through Connector, and Madden's not slowing down. It's another headshot to him. I agree. I mean, I don't think Godsen will feel... Of course, they're not writing themselves off. They want to feel super confident about this. Oh, it's all Ooh. awkward for Device. He got stuck on the ladder. He couldn't move. And anyone that's played CS knows just how bad your aim gets when you're on the ladder. <laughs> all over the place. You're never hitting anybody. And Madden stays in position. How is he still alive? How has he not died yet? Finally goes down to Magis, but he's knocked him down to 30 HP in the process. What, what the hell, Magis? Running down the ladder, no scope, Stiko? Are you serious? Right off the back of Astralis getting a solid buy into effect to lose the first player that quickly is going to be devastating. And Dupree tries to go for a wide swing, but doesn't anticipate two players pushing his location. He isn't fully punished with his life and he's dropped down low. Zipex now holding on, and Emmy survives with 12. God sent just by the skin of their teeth, keeping that player advantage intact. The Vice trying to sneak his way through. Been having a bit of a rough time and it's not about to get any better. Magis being one of the few healthier members. Gonna have to try and do a lot here. Left blind as he looks to try and push down. And Emmy's coming in from behind. He spotted him as well. This is so much information. A free kill for the IGL. Leaving just Dupree who's also tagged incredibly well. It's left on to just him and while he'll fall as well. Pretty... That's the mark, honestly. It was looking like they were going to get at least 8-7. Suddenly fell into the abyss. But this CT side has proved to be pretty damn impressive. Now, this is an eco, by and large, so I somewhat talk over this a little bit. Madden gets a 3k. This is where Godsent will start to build in that belief. Again, it's not that you write yourself off. These guys are all super competitive. They all believe that they can be the best team in the world. I'm sure of it to the players after this uh, best of three is concluded. But we also said 
It's really not a bad veto for God's sake. Zan in the meanwhile though now needs to hold the line as a whole bunch of T's rush towards him but Dupree separates himself from the pack. Device at least gets the avenging blow onto Zan with the AWP and now Farlig takes the initiative. He pushes forward. He wants to shut down his Danish brothers. Device now standing alongside Glaive. It's a 2v4. He's already got one but Farlig death from above leaving Glaive to show us just how aggressive he can be, but he walks out into the hail of bullets. I wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt that we hadn't seen many buy rounds from them, but now a couple have gone past and they've gone with the win. Godsend are winning these cleanly. Farlig, $12,000. Zen, 10000 But Sticko, well, he at least is going to have to rebuy going into the next round as the Deagle of Device finds one. Madden, the Flash is a, a little bit late. He'll survive for at least a time, but Zipex has found the trade. Emmy retrieving the AWP and gonna look to try and use it for himself. But this round is doable now, Vince. Even more doable than Zipex has carved a path through Zen and devices let the Deagle do the talking for him. Emmy, the man of the hour. A man that's been playing pretty solidly has missed a shot that probably costs him the round. And this has been one of the worst buys that Astralis have had to their name on this entire half with Deagles. It's more about the bigger picture that starts to come into fruition. The round is over, that much is sure certain, but it may seemingly like he will hold on to the AWP after all, Tom. Astralis did go in, but it was more half-hearted and disjointed and they got punished. Let the grenades and bullets fly. Zen flashed at the back of the site looking to relocate. If he can get a couple kills, that would be massive for his teammates. It's unlikely he will survive for much longer, but he comes out with that flashbang, takes down Magus, puts it into a 3v5, and has also stalled the bomb flap. Then it goes back in for even more damage. But in the blink of an eye, Glaive and Device tag team each other in for three of their own kills. And with 35 seconds to go, it is a two on two, albeit with Glaive on low HP, and a flank coming into effect, and it's Stiko that's now shown his hand. A low health Glaive on 12 has to try and repel the onslaught from two separate angles, but he has the perfect read of the situation. He's done the calculations. He's typed them in. Does he have the correct answer? Hiding on the ladder, 50% of the fuse is ticked away. Molly tossed in to try and drop one of these angles and Glaive has snaked his way to the top of the train. There's one spray in, but Stiko will go for the wild panic spray and take him out. God sent just about hold on and pick up 13. Fast play may be imminent. Flashbang's over, but a well placed incendiary keeps the T's in position. And Stiko getting the first again. They rush through the fire and the flames, but that's into an early grave. And Magisk is the only player from Astralis that has battled back. Yeah, and it looks like he might be the only one to do anything. He's gone down. Glaive trying to make a push through the Molotov. It's a miss, though, from Farlig. And this has been the man who's probably been the best player. At least going into the T side, especially. Glaive has at least given them some glimmers of hope. Has a chance to take another duel, but he's not going to win it. Madden will close him down unless it's onto the Clutchmeister himself. He's been quiet this game, and he walks straight into the hands of Zen. Well... Another example of a superb nade, but more of a panic from Zen, and he's been overwhelmed. Look at the utility damage, though. So many players have just been wrecked by the amount of grenades thrown by Godsen. They will get a bomb plant, get themselves into position. This is not a full investment from Astralis. This is an attempt to do a bit of damage, steal a round, a double nade from Emmy as well. Zen, you can see, is already starting to celebrate. I think he knows this round is going their way. It's only Magisk left. One before, Deagle in hand, and he gets absolutely nothing done. It will be 15 for Godsent. The bomb's still very far away as well. If it is going towards B, they're going to have to get a move on. 20 seconds, Vince, but Glaive has got them an entry. Madden is here. The rotation's coming. The push comes through, and Glaive has taken this into his own hands. He may not be leading, but he's leading by example as he runs through and gives them a round that maybe never should have been. That bomb... At what point do Godsent make the slight tweaks and alterations? and potentially just shut you down. I would expect to see if we if we have a good spawn. I'm not so sure they can rely on that every single round. 20 seconds is all they have left. They're setting up their grenades as they go for the push. It's a missed shot from Sticko though. That could be enough as Dupree now runs in. Emmy just trying to survive on the site. 
He knows if he can drop the bomb that that'll be enough to win them the round. Just 10 seconds left. Farlings dropped another. They hear the bomb being planted, but they're patient. They're waiting. It's all falling apart for Astralis and Godsend have done it. They have taken the map pick of Train. Not something I necessarily expected to happen. I'm not even sure it's something I wanted to happen for the integrity of this tournament, knowing that Astralis are one of the favorites. But the fact is Godsend have already come here. Can Godsent recreate some of the magic that they've already thrown out? And they might be in for a nasty surprise because it's a fast push. Hugging the close wall has given a lot of space to Astralis and already given them the opener. Yeah, the opening pick is good. And Stiko and Zen have both been obliterated down to around the 10 HP mark. Madden at least getting one. He had a lot of success in the pistols on train. But his days are numbered. As are Godsense, it would seem. Looking to boost up, do get a bit of success, but the smoke is still in play, and Device keeps just putting these speculative shots through there. Anticipating that he's about to get peaked, which is the correct assumption. But Dupree is the player that is making all the shots stick, all the shots land, and Device closes things out. Uh, no slouches, and they've, they've already taken Astralis down the peg. But maybe that is something to watch out for as the tournament progresses on. Magisk straight through the smoke. Extinguishing the Molotov and Zen. Vanishing Magisk back to the bench once more. And it's the first time that Godsent have had really any kind of a stranglehold over any round, and Glaive while flashed with the UMP puts it down range onto Zen. Madden stuck in no man's land and has now been put out of his misery. Astralis can get onto the bomb. They've got the successful plant down, but this time Godsent have weapons, and it's a three on three. Even still, this B site retake is one that arguably the one of the toughest in the game. And wow, Zipix actually going to go for the repeat here. When we talk about Dust 2 as a map in general, we talk about that momentum, especially on the T side, and getting yourself rolling and building into the match. Because he has that timing spot. And actually, both players miss. That is not the result it was expecting at all. There needed to be death, someone needed to fall, and while Farling goes back for more, just to make sure the prophecy comes true. It's pretty wild that neither player even landed a leg shot, just straight up both missed. To see that again in slow motion to fully decipher what the hell happened. Emmy though, taking the initiative, playing aggressive on catwalk, is sick and tired of being pushed and bullied around from the Danes on Astralis. Takes matters into his own hands. And now Zen is peering down middle. Flick on to Dupree. That should be the round falling into place for Godsend. Better late than never. It does look like the clock's just going to tick down. A slightly uneventful end to the round, but one that I'm sure Godsend are going to be quite happy with. Stiko was getting close towards the entrance, was maybe thinking about trying to push through, but took a bit of nade damage. That's put him off, and Dupree sprays down onto Farlig, loses his life needlessly. And that gives Astralis another step back into the round. And maybe they can just bring Godsent down to their knees instantly. They're not going to be playing slowly any longer. They pick up the pace. Dupree picks up the headshot, as does Glaive. And the Godsent defense has fallen once again. They almost look like they're trying to work as a, a tag team in this situation, which is a pretty terrifying prospect. Zen, in an attempt to save the Orc, they do have a little bit of extra cash to spare, but they don't want to lose all the weapons here. And Astralis, knowing how much money they have available in the bank, they're going to risk it. They're going to push through. Zen will be able to take down one, but the push continues. They can't lose any guns, and they do. That up into this B site, a very good hold, in fact, from Godsent. They've got three players here. So if this round goes wrong, then we we ring the alarm bell. Somebody can go spam into the bell on Inferno and start dinging away. Because they've got everybody here. If they don't manage to win this round, then I think it's going to be an absolute slaughter. And it isn't looking too good. The nade comes through, but Sticker goes down. And they trade not even evenly. What a great problem it is to have as well, Tom, where you're deciding who the most aggressive player and who the entry frag on your team should be. <laughs> Like, that, that really is a fantastic position to be in, you know. You have Dupree that can go super aggro, but Glaive's up to the task as well. Yeah, this, this feels like I want to see Godsent try and dictate the pace of some of these rounds because right now they're giving up way too much real estate and Astralis are just waltzing in. This must feel like uh, almost a pug to them, you know. It's just been so straightforward. Emmy, at least he's going to put down a bit of damage, but felt compelled to go back in. Understandably, he was stuck down and ramped. The new grenades were going to be flung his way. But I'd like to see them dictate the pace with some aggressive plays. Like, if you're going to go out, at least go out on your own terms. 
Don't let Astralis basically bully you into submission, and that's what it feels like right now, Tom. This is kind of brutal to watch, if I'm being honest, and after a great train performance, it would be a real shame if Godsend got destroyed like 16-1, 16-2 here. Well, we, we sort of spoke about it earlier, like, it, it's a nice problem to have with having that many players who can entry frag. It's also nice when Device just decides he's going to kill everyone. There you go, Falling though! What is that? That completely caught me off guard. He's not even broken a smile. He's just digged three players in a matter of seconds. Godsent have played in numerous times. May not expect a fast rotation from two players, but they do have a smoke for it. So even though Farlig has just pulled off a miracle play, this actually is still very winnable for Device and Magus. Can keep in mind that Device is already on 14 frags and we're only into the 12th round. And he could be adding a bunch more to that tally. Stick up, falling both low, and Magus takes them both down, spins across, and saves the round. Yeah, and th this really is going off the back of what we were hoping to see more of, is, is these kind of throw it into the wind plays. You know, just go out swinging, hoping for the best. Dupree will bag himself Stiko on the site, who is the last line of defense on the site itself. But Emmy, at least locking it down on long. Madden, toying with the idea of pushing through the smoke, knows somebody's in there. He tried to move through, and now the trajectory of that flashbang will definitely give it up. But it's only an MP9. If he had an M4, maybe it was a doable, but at range, Zayn is going to put his SMG to use. And that puts Device in a 1v2 on 13 HP. Now, they don't have any grenades or smokes to flush him out. And the bomb is planted for his position. Device is clutched so many times from situations like this, but Zen with the wide swing and the AK picks up a third kill and picks up a second round. From all the aggression that Astralis have been putting down range, Stiko with the AWP strikes for a second time. And Astralis have the bomb under wraps from Zipex, but he is isolated from his teammates and there's a molly down on lower tunnels, which keeps Magisk at bay. Madden peaks a little bit too preemptively before the smoke has a chance to fully plume, but Zen is there on spot to deliver the fatal shot to Dupree. Surely, Tom, God sent about to pick up a third before this half ends. They've been locked into the tunnels. You can see that Sticko's in a good position, and Emmy, a bit of a risk, but he still just patiently waits for the remaining players. No, he has support, and Zen is already going to put one of them in the grave. Magis left. Low on HP, it will be a half at least closing in the favor of Godsent, but they are 12-3 down. And they proved I thought I was toxic so. board. You're meant to be <laughs> Big V, come on. <laughs> you can be Big T and I'll be toxic ball from now on. There we go. <laughs> well, already it is looking like the beginning of the end. The pistol round's gone very far in favor of Astralis already. Two kills coming up, Dupree and Glaive combining. Sticko. He's got to be careful here because Glaive is still lurking in the corner towards Long. An irritating position to clear. He rounds it and oh, he's going to get a shot off, but that will be all a double up. Well, leaving it on to Madden and Zen. No utility left to try and get anything done. They're just going to have to out aim Astralis, which they managed to do on map number one, but they will not achieve anything here. A second pistol one and potentially the second map with it. They've at least brute forced their way up catwalk. And with the scout at this range, maybe they can claim some heads and make something of this round yet. But they also seem like they're stuck in middle to me, Tom. Like they've put in loads of smokes, but they're not really pushed behind it because they're faking it towards B. Somehow they managed actually to get an opener onto magic in the window. The rotation is strong though. And with the doors now facing in this direction, it becomes a lot tougher for them to cross. Pulling all the strings for the rest of his team. But how is the utility from Godsent? The grenade perfectly placed and the headshot delivered to perfection. Lots of damage, but Magus has fallen. And now the CTs decide to push through the smoke. And the MP5 has now worked against Astralis. Godsent looking good to pick up the round. On the other side of things, Glaive just happy to chill out towards Long. Not really risking his gun at all. And Madden, I think he's realized that in this sort of scenario, pushing too much further forward could be the loss of his own gun. Although he is going to try and hunt down and he gets there as well. They do fire a few speculative shot through the smoke, but nothing too significant. But now there's some damage coming in. They look to try and boost over. Dupree coming out worse for wear, but still sprays down. And Glaive goes in on Zen, leaving Sticko with his scout and Farlig's AK. 
on a weakened body alongside it. And there's bullets raining through the car. Scout shot misses the first time, but Steko connects two in a row and puts this round in close proximity. Farlig's gone down. Steko's on for the ace. He's on for the clutch. He's on for all the accolades. And that's what Godsent require to just hang on by a thread in this game. That's how good Astralis has been. But can Steko be up to the mark? Misses his chance, perhaps, and down he goes. Live by the scout, die by it. Is there anything left in the tank for Godsend? Does seem like fumes are all they have left. Dupree, though, and Glaive, both wide swinging middle, get punished. And lives are deemed forfeit. Magisk up on the window also could have some help from Device, who is on the other side of the smoke, waiting to pierce through there and show his hand. But a Molotov there to greet him. It's well placed. And now Godsent changing up their angles. They're going into tunnel. Could be the final play of the map. We'll see Magisk trade out one for one. through the smoke it's gone from bad to worse and now sticko's left in a clutch situation once again he's gonna take a risk or so it seemed they almost want to know that he's stuck towards this site the plant coming through device even baits him with the footsteps he's just playing with his opponent here sticko trying to mind game device but it's just not working and eventually device will kill him through the door an absolute brutal devastation of godsend when it came down to the map of dust 2 and I'm looking forward to what the future will hold from them. But for now, they start on the CT side of the map, so Astralis will be quick to fire some frags down. Device and Zipex both connecting with their blocks. Now Emmy at range will be trying to tee off on any of the oncoming aggressors. He has to play a different angle, goes back against the wall, and May just kills him where he stands. Three kills unanswered before Farling shows his hand up on top of Heaven and he falls to his death, leaving it all on Zen. If he's not killed by the Heaven players, he's getting wrapped on by Zipex. Down he goes and Astralis claim first blood again. Not anymore. Like you're looking at six, seven rounds, maybe even winning it sometimes because they are that good at this half of new. And they're going to go running in. Emmy actually wins his opening duel. Not bad with the CZ, and actually Zen's caught another one. Maybe they're gonna try and throw a spanner in the works. We saw it earlier on from the likes of Contact, and they're going huge. It's left on to Device. You mentioned his flashy plays, Vince. Well, he needs to be as flashy as it gets. Oh, he needs to be flashy enough to blind all the oncoming CTs if he's gonna have a chance to get out, and he doesn't have a flashbang to do it. Runs out of ammunition, lucky to still be alive, but it's at the cost of so much HP, and Madden finishes off what he started. Once again, Godsent make the pistols work. It's kind of where Godsent came good. Sure, they had a couple players that pushed in aggressively, but they also had the static members cleaning up the rest, but Dupree's aggression is paid off. In time with a headshot. Magis tagged and then finished off. Glaive, meanwhile, puts a bullet down range and connects onto to the head of Madden. And Sticko switches from his UMP to his Deagle. For them now, 35 seconds left. They're almost hoping that there's nobody watching on the other side, but there are players ready for the cross. Looking like they're going to try and wrap back into this A site, but they've missed heart. Maybe they're just trying to hold off rotations. I think that's the case. Farlik, however, is already going to catch off one. The remaining players have gone down, but it seems like Godsend might have got this slightly wrong. The rotation comes in from Sticko, but he loses the duel. And with only 15 seconds left, it could have been crucial. Farlik misses as well. They had chances in this round, but it's all fallen apart as only two remain. And so even though Godsend will concede this round, I honestly feel like there's a very good chance of this being a 4-1 Tom, no post plan, and Astralis being broken. And they decide to push together as a united force. They're all coming up through secret, trying to get round the back of the teams. The spray is good. It yields the kill onto Madden, and there's Emmy picking up the slack onto Glaive, who clearly did not anticipate two players to face off against him at the same time. And the bomb's also been dropped down. Someone from Astralis has to go pick that up with 30 seconds to spare, and they find themselves a player behind. Maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe this still will go the way of Astralis. Or maybe Dupree pulls this out the fire. Defy switches weapons at the worst possible moment. And that will cost him, and that will cost Astralis. I can only assume that was off the back of his decision, and they just group up together and look to retake outside as a unit. That's not something you see too often as well.
still to be claimed, if anything, by Astralis if they are going to make this move. A peek in towards A as it looks to be the final place they look to plant the bomb, although instead they switch it up late. Sticko about to come under pressure. 20 seconds. If he can deny them, the flashbang might slow them down enough that he can get back into a position to deny the plant. Still a bit of confusion from the rest of the players. And again, how do they keep pulling out these rounds? With 10 seconds, they waltz in, get the entries they need, and slaughter Godsend. Thrown in the smokes again, but Device is about to go walking into Zen, who's patiently waiting for him this time. Madden also looking to get up close. Does like to try and push these smokes occasionally, but more importantly, Magisk finds the trade. Stops any more shenanigans on outside. And more importantly, they've got this control for free. There's nobody there to challenge them anymore, so you have to hope for Godsend's sake they are prepared for somebody to push from above. Yeah, you'd certainly think that would be the case, and it seems like it's Emmy that has the right idea, but so does Dupree. He has read the script. He's a couple pages ahead of Emmy, and you definitely don't envy Emmy's position there. Stuck on the site alone, knowing he had to watch multiple angles. Farley, though, comes out with one. Nearly a second. Zipex has been dropped to 4 HP. And Stiko, who is thinking of making moves into heaven, now has to bypass that a little bit longer. <laughs> Pop flash from Madden. And that's definitely the rough edge of the over-aggression that you see from him sometimes. Oh, they're changing the pace. I like the idea. They had a few slower rounds, but it seems like Evan's prepared. Even still, though, a couple of trades come back in. Keeping this one possible, we've seen some crazy clutch situations in the last map of 2v4 that started so well, but actually, Zen finds a kill straight onto Magisk. He wasn't the intended target, but I don't think he's going to care. Blade, he actually gets tagged. That's so much information over. They know roughly where he's going at this point. The only problem I have, Vince, no kits. Yeah, but I feel like that problem may get bypassed, although Blade may have an idea of where the bombs... <laughs> They can quickly switch things up. Farley, though, should be able to get this pick. He takes a very aggressive stance. He doesn't actually have any support from Sticko. Even the pre-fire isn't enough. The double team of Dupree and Device is there to ruin their day. And Zen tries to make a risky play through the Molotov. But there's nothing to be found. It's, it's not a personal choice. But hopefully he'll be back soon. And you won't have to listen to just my voice for the rest of the match. But either way... It is going to be seven to six. It seems like he's just going to be running the gauntlet. Potentially even just trying to take down Sticko, who's been the main problem for them getting further forward. This time it's falling and he doesn't let go of the W key. Glaive maybe showing that the UMP hasn't fallen as far out of fashion as maybe we thought. And Device, he's in such a good spot. It's got to be frustrating at this point for the players of Godson. Every time they try and rotate, they walk into somebody from... This Astralis side. Glaive still got okay. okay. If he wins this duel, I think that maybe we just see God sent DC from the server. And the nade, in fact, going to be dunked onto his head as a, a warning sign, a denial of presence. He's still pushing, though. I'm slowly bringing it back. And these late round executions they've had throughout this match so far have been stellar. It doesn't seem to be a problem for them whatsoever. They actually doubled up on low, though. I like it. Emmy throwing in a bit of spice to the mix and Zen doing a good job to try and hold the line. The vent dive, it looked like Glaive just insta headshot. Whoever was down the bottom, Sticko, probably frustration continues, but the fact is Glaive, 25 seconds, a 1v3 situation. Should be waiting patiently for them to round the corner and it isn't going to be happening. Godsent will at least bring things back a little bit, but it was a still a very good half for Astralis. Kick off our third and final map of our final best of three of today's proceedings. 8-7 the score. Oh, man, and that one tap is delicious onto Device. And he just closes the door in style. He's got the pick he was looking for, and now Godsent look to push down ramp to try and make the most of it. Start they definitely need. They got off to a strong one in the last, although the pistol went the way of Astralis. It was the second round they managed to convert. Zipix, he turns back to in a similar fashion with a headshot, to say the least, and now they're going to look to hunt him down Madden again, but look at the quick rotation. Magisk, though, he's missing a couple of shots. He had an opportunity to potentially deny. However, now they go for the plant, and Madden plays gatekeeper. And trying to submerge them as best as they can. This has been such an impressive performance by Godsent. 
And although Emmy goes down with the ship as every good captain should, the people that say that they're past it, they won't get back to that level that we once saw Astralis at. Now, if they lose the first map against Godsent, I mean, no disrespect to Godsent at all. But if they were, that is brutal. Now, Device has got himself as use kill, but all things considered, it means nothing in terms of how this round is going down. It still will fall underway, as although USP shots connect onto Emmy, of their utility, no more smokes, no more incendiaries. They know there's some plays in Squeaky as Dupree's just spotted a flash tossed out, getting one but traded back. He needs mages to stand big, deliver some big kills, but he's only going to be able to get one kill before Device comes in and cleans house with the AWP. And now it's down to Zen. He has control over the bomb. He could maybe cheekily go for a full buy down on the, uh, the plant. And although the device is up in heaven, he didn't actually go to wide swing and peek in. So Zen has a chance now. He's not just got the plant, but he's managed to scurry away from the bomb. He's about to get pushed though from multiple angles before it gets tested. There's the first headshot. Three kills on the board already. He picks up a fourth, spins back around, and it's so close. Zipex takes him down, but it's at such great cost. Madden. And of course, Zen, this team actually becomes quite scary. The problem is, it's the consistency of those players. Dupree has been absolutely destroyed by grenades. That almost looks like predictive grenades. Like they're putting them into position to try and deny the aggression of this side. And he's also found an opener and they know he's here. They're prepared for it. They're just pre-firing the angle. He's had to flee. Astralis, already a player behind. Dupree on 4 HP. And as I touched on before, the overall money count is $200 collectively. This is where that Zen heroic play with the 4K at the end of the last round could come full circle, break down the Danes once again. And Madden with his entry onto devices, making it more realistic. Dupree fully flashed, he's absolutely irate. Uh, that outcome, to take away the AK from Zipex, then two or three lives, Godsent should be chasing him down. They know where he is. There's two players that are low economy, but three that can easily rebuy again. And one of which was Stiko, bullet in the head. Aggressive. Like, this has been his main success. He's had a rough map. The last two were decent. Especially on the first, he put up some real numbers. And just left completely blind, though, and Emmy with a double entry. Which one of these is the four-time major champions and which is the guy who's just joined the team on trial? Because Emmy is tearing the new one. A third kill. Zen even spins around. Astralis are falling like dominoes. There will be pieces around it should Astralis choose to force by. Magisk and Zipex can get it done. Round loss bonus is accruing. He was one of the sort of saving graces for them, especially on map one. A lot of the entry frags, a lot of the aggression he was pulling off on the CT side was what garnered a lot of their success. Here comes this execution again, though. This time, though, it's Magus Dupree helping along the way. There's going to be a trade eventually, but it's too little too late. Farlig, 1v3 situation. Vince, he does, however, have the bomb. He does have the bomb. He had, has time as well. And he could go where Zen has gone before and hurt the economy, but Glaive does not allow it to take shape. They've gone for the booster check down on the doorway side of the stairs, and the decon stairs now will show its hand. Magus tosses in the grenade, softens them up, and then finishes off Farlig, and the loss of Madden's life will make this that little bit more tentative for Godsent. They look to try and re-emerge, re-engage, potentially going up the vents towards a site. Flashbang through, an important moment in the round, also goes against Godsent, and that could be the round. Slipping and sliding away. Every player survives on Astralis. We're not done just yet. Oh, the flashbangs. They are beautiful. Sticker man, he has a lineup for everything. He'll put you in place, he'll set you up, and he'll leave opponents on the deck. Another entry for Emmy, but that one was for free. Glaive, though, he's found two back in response. And a couple of low players still make this an opportunity, Vince, as we enter a 2v3. Low HP, though, on two of Godsent. Farlig and Emmy both struggling. Zipex drops down. He's accepted his fate, but he'll lose some health due to gravity. His knees will be buckled, but so will Astralis. They are willing to take the roles needed for them to win, and that is why they're challenging one of the best teams of all time. God sent 14 to 11 up. 
Sticko straight through the smoke. Frustration for Magisk. There's nothing you can do about that. And while Glaive's going to be forced into the corner, he has a smoke, but he's just going to burn to death. He accepts his fate. It's, I don't know what the decision was there. He thought he could escape the flames and instead it's falling apart. Stiko's also gained a lot of control while here. And a double orb. If the bomb goes down, it's over. Oh no, just everything's going wrong. Dupree shot between two of them. That's a shot he's got to land. If he wants to bring them out of this, the jaws of defeat. He has to apply the pressure and Zipex is doing everything he can. There's the wall bang through the box into the cranium of Stiko. Cracks it open. Surgical precision. Finally, Astral is starting to connect the dots. Such a strange clown shoes kind of round before that with Glaive dying needlessly. And it's a two on two. This round's not done. Oh, oh Zen, that one tap is something sublime. And it puts it down to the vice. The puggy map would be won by Astralis, 16 to 4. And the two maps renowned for their tactical bases. Two maps that Astralis have been legendary on at previous times in their careers. But that's only part of the puzzle. Godsend have got to connect the rest of it. They drop down. They'll be facing off against Zipex. He misses. It's going to be another miss. So many misses for Astralis. And that will cost them the B site. Three, the nade is going to do some extra damage. He actually denies the plant and device has caught another one. It might not be over just yet. It was looking like a good stance here for the side of Godsent, but it's starting to slip a little bit, especially with Emmy. 9 HP after the initial duel he took with Glaive. Not much utility remaining though for the final players. Currently sit within the server. Farlig with a, a single HE. This angle normally pretty good, but taking so many angles at once could be tough. Farlig actually removes one of them. He gets them a little bit more control and sets them up for the 3v3. Boxen brought back down to two. Time ticking away, but Stiko comes out with one, and there's Farlig. It's down to Glaive. He's been tagged down to 35, and that's gonna be it. The upset is here. God sent take down Astralis. Can you believe it? Oh, the smiles on their faces, I'm sure. Another shock to anybody at the moment. Emmy has come in and with one best of three as practice.